Hi folks, thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. In some of my other videos, I've made note of my strong preference for the use of resonant antennas. Using an antenna that is designed specifically for the band or bands you want to operate on generally provides better performance and simplifies your radio system. As we have all learned through experience, there is less to go wrong with simple things. When using a resonant antenna, all you need to set up your station is a transceiver, a power supply, the antenna, a support system for the antenna, and cabling to hook it all together. Troubleshooting such a system is more straightforward if things go awry. Yet there are times when you might want to use an antenna that is not resonant. Antennas like off-center fed dipoles and windoms may only be resonant on one band, but offer good performance on other bands when used with an antenna tuner. If you choose to use such an antenna, you'll need a tuner to get your antenna system to present the correct impedance load to your transceiver. Before I break down the advantages and disadvantages of automatic versus manual tuners, I'd like to share a quick note in regard to the need for an antenna tuner. For the benefit of those who are new to ham radio, the standing wave ratio, often referred to by the acronym SWR, is the measurement of reflected power. Reflected power is the percentage of transmitted power that is sent to the antenna, but which is not radiated into the air. Instead, this reflected power travels back down the feed line to the transmitter. If the level of reflected power is high enough, the transmitter can be damaged. This condition is caused by an antenna system whose impedance does not match the requirements of the transmitter. These impedance mismatches occur when an antenna system that is not resonant on the desired band is used. Antenna tuners are used to correct the impedance mismatch and can prevent such damage. When choosing an antenna tuner, the choice comes down to an automatic tuner or a manual tuner. Automatic antenna tuners work very well for many people. They are simple to use and in the right circumstance are the best choice. These days, many mainstream transceivers available on the new market feature built-in automatic antenna tuners. With the press of a button, you can transform a mismatched antenna system into one that gives the transceiver what it needs to function properly. This capability allows the operator to quickly be in a position to operate on frequencies the antenna system does not directly support. While having the advantage of being very convenient, these internal and some external tuners are often limited in their ability to resolve larger mismatches. Many of these tuners have an impedance range maxing out at 150 ohms, which roughly correlates to an SWR of 3 to 1. A tuner with a 150 ohm specification gives the operator the ability to extend the tuning range of a resonant antenna which does not inherently cover an entire band, thus allowing the operator to work right across that band. However, in many cases, internal tuners are not capable of tuning an antenna on a non-resonant band. For those using lower end or more dated transceivers, that do not incorporate an internal automatic antenna tuner, an external tuner is the only way to go. In recent years, outboard automatic antenna tuners have taken the market by storm. Some automatic external tuners provide a wider range, such as this LDG Z100, which per the manufacturer's specification can resolve impedances as high as 800 ohms. Given this, automatic tuners have earned their place as the most popular option in the competition with manual tuners. But let's slow down and take a closer look at a few factors which might suggest a manual tuner is the better choice for some operators. The convenience of automatic tuners comes with a few limitations. Many automatic tuners cannot handle as wide a range of impedances as their manual tuner alternatives. To help alleviate this shortcoming, some transceivers have high SWR protection circuitry built in. What this circuitry does is roll back the RF power when the transmitter senses an SWR,
that is high enough to damage the rig. This is a great feature to have as it prevents damage to your expensive RF power output transistors in the event you try to transmit on a compromised antenna system. The issue is that not all rigs have this sort of circuitry built in. Many rigs which have been very popular over the years but have garnered a reputation for blown finals include the Yaesu FT817 and the ICOM IC7000 to mention only a couple. It is my belief that if you do not have a rig that has the RF power rollback feature or if you have a transceiver that has a reputation for blown finals an automatic antenna tuner is not the best choice for you. Here is my rationale. Automatic antenna tuners will cycle through a range of capacitors and coils trying to find the right combination to match the antenna system to the transmitter. This is all well and good, but on certain antenna systems this process can take several seconds. In some cases the automatic tuner will take longer than normal, not be able to find the correct combination and give up. Where this becomes worrisome is that as the tuner tries to find the right combination it can present a very high SWR to the transmitter for an extended period of time. It's important to add that while the automatic tuner is trying to find a suitable combination, with many tuners you don't have the ability to halt the process if you get concerned. For some transceivers, subjecting the RF power output transistors to these high levels of reflected power might be all it takes for these components to fail. Replacing RF power transistors can be very expensive. Conversely, if you use a manual tuner instead of an automatic tuner, you are the one manipulating the tuner. You can stop the process at any time to give your rig a break from high SWR levels, then resume after a moment or two. Another knock against automatic tuners is that at times they can't find a correct combination for an antenna system that some manual tuners with a similar impedance range have no issue resolving. Let's throw one more negative onto the automatic antenna tuner pile. Many of us use our radios to listen to more than just the ham bands. Most automatic antenna tuners require you to transmit a signal to activate the tuner. This means if you are listening to a frequency which is not on the ham bands, for example WWV on 15 MHz, you have no way to activate an automatic tuner for peak reception on that frequency. With a manual tuner, all you have to do to peak the antenna system for whatever frequency you are listening to is twist the knobs on the front of the tuner for best signal. And finally, one last thought has come to mind in regard to the use of manual tuners. In this day and age of ham radio appliance operators, the use of a manual tuner gives not only greater tuning range and safer operating for your rig, but also takes us back to a day where working our rigs was more of a hands-on skill. Using a manual tuner reminds us that ham radio is technical in nature. It's okay to do things the old-fashioned way, and in doing so, provides us with a measure of increased capability. So there you have it, my thoughts on automatic versus manual tuners. Just before I sign off, I'd like to take a moment to mention Julian, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November's terrific YouTube channel. Julian pushes the envelope in regard to outdoor amateur radio operating. His channel and associated blog are great resources for any ham interested in portable and digital operations. Julian is no fair weather ham. He braves the worst weather to help give us all the information we need to get outside and be successful in doing so. The link to Julian's channel can be found in my video notes below. Please check out his channel and tell Julian that Tracy sent you. I'm always interested in hearing what you folks have to say, so please feel free to leave a comment below. 
If you enjoyed this video, and I sure hope you did, would you give it a thumbs up? And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. It's your comments, your likes, and your subscribes that keep me coming back to produce more videos. I'm having fun with it, but I want to make sure that my videos are actually resonating with the audience. All feedback is welcome. I try to read every comment that you leave and, and get back to as many as I can. So for now, that's it. Remember, get out of the shack, get outdoors, and get on the air. 73 from Tracy, VE3TWM.